Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of ISTQB specialist mobile application tester. We are in chapter three talking about the test types and the test process for mobile applications and moving into the next topic of it that is 3.2 additional test levels applicable for mobile applications. So of course as a part of our previous tutorial, we have understood there are so many other levels which are relevant for testing, but beyond that, there are some levels which are specific for the mobile applications only. Now, generally, they are not conducted, but if it comes to mobile applications, we must have some additional test levels need to be operated, planned, and performed in order to make sure the application behaves well. And that's what we will be understanding here with starting on the very first thing, which is field testing. Now, field testing, as the name suggests, that uh, an executive or a test engineer need to work out of the premises where the application is being developed and being installed on the machine that is like the device and then walking out of the office to see the switches between different network type in reality and also what happens if you switch from a Wi-Fi mode to a cellular data mode. So does this get, give an impact to the application? Does it impact the user experience? Or does it also crashes at any point of time? That should not be happening because a real user would also be doing something similar. Sometime he switches between Wi-Fi and field uh, the cellular data from time to time. So some mobile application need field testing to ensure that they function correctly in the expected usage scenario of the real users. Now this could include testing on various networks and on different types of communication technologies such as Wi-Fi or cellular data. Now the field test should include the use of mobile towers, networks, Wi-Fi and cellular data switching while the app is in use. Now tests should be performed with varying download speeds and signal strength and include the handling of the blind spots. The blind spot here basically means that when you are exactly under a basement or probably under a tree which is very dense and does not have any network coverage. So what exactly happens when you suddenly move from 4G to no service and from no service to 4G again, then does it react? So this can happen as you really move into a real environment. Of course, a lot of things can be done with help of the simulators and emulators, but we want to test it in reality when it dynamically happens, not planned. So field testing requires careful planning and the identification of all items required to perform the test, such as appropriate device types, Wi-Fi, cellular data plans on various carriers, and access to various modes of transport required to give adequate coverage. In addition, the routes and the mode of transport and the time of the day when the tests are to be executed should be scheduled appropriately because it does matter like you know when you have congestions during the daytime there are a lot of cellular uh, devices right next to you for example when you get stuck on a traffic jam or probably you stay on a signal for a while there are many other people having their devices just close to you does that impact anything but when you're traveling in the night probably at the midnight when hardly people are found on the street you are alone the only person using that network area and you have a amazing bandwidth so it should be planned accordingly to see the impact of these changes and these scenarios on the app. Now, usability of an app is another important aspect that needs to be covered while conducting the field testing. The, uh, the test should incorporate environmental factors such as temperature and similar conditions related to usage scenario. Adding more to it, application store approval and post-release testing. A lot of time we do understand that, you know, there is a checklist from the application store and uh, for example, Google Play Store or App Store or Windows Store and they have to be met in order to list your app on the store. At the same time, post-release testing should also be conducted because most of the time internally when you are testing it, you would be testing it from in your internal APK files or any other option like side-by-side -side downloading. But when it comes to reality, you should also test that will a user be able to download from a store and install it and then it works perfectly fine. Because that can only be done when you have listed your app on the store. But before that, you are testing without listing it on the store and doing all your possible tests. So once done, you need to cover that as well, which is an additional thing which does happen here. 
Now, before an app is sent to uh, the publishers for publishing some checklist based test must be passed to assure the approval of the application stores. Now, if the release is an upgrade, then upgrade related test should be also run in order to post that update on the Play Store. Now, checklists are typically based on guidelines such as those specific to operating systems for user interface design and for using the libraries and API uh, provided by the application stores. The approval process may take some time after submission where definitely they go through evaluating all your checklist points and meeting that criteria list which the Play Store or the store has for you and that will certainly take some time after your submission. If any issues are found during the approval process, a new version may need to be submitted uh, which will require additional time to resolve it. The situation requires careful consideration during pl project planning and testing. Now, a further level of testing is post-release testing, which is testing at this level includes downloading and installing the application from the application stores directly. So putting it all together, we are actually trying to understand that there are a few other levels which are important for specifically on mobile application testing to be covered in order to make sure that these apps will not always be tested in a particular connectivity type. They may have, they will be portable devices, so they can come across several options when real users work with it. And at the same time, the store where they will be shopping it from or downloading from need to also be covered in order to make sure that a user can actually download and use it or not. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with another tutorial. Till then, should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.